Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we talk about architectural standing seam metal roofing and on-site portable roll forming at a project here on the Florida coast. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals. Got a very special guest with me today, Joe Keen from Integrity Metals. Hello. Thank you so much for being on the channel, really appreciate it. Today we're gonna to talk about architectural standing seam here in Florida, uh, and specifically at a project that we're at. Can you tell me a little bit first about yourself and your experience and kind of how you got into metal? I came up in a construction family and that kind of led me into the roofing aspect. I ended up coming across uh, large metal roof manufacturing company. Worked myself into operations, which is more uh, my gig, and ended up uh, running operations you know, for a 140 employee company, um, pumping out you know, about 12 million feet of metal roofing a year. Wow. And, um, and then kind of separated from that, uh, have a family, and I was just running the road a little bit too much. And so um, kind of worked our way into this gig uh, here and uh, focus on uh, more of the specialty side of things, um, not large production, but try to find projects that are special uh, that we can touch that uh, other people are a little more hesitant and reluctant to jump into. Yeah, that's awesome. And sometimes those projects, you know, are really, really cool, like this one that we're going to talk about today. But first, can you tell me a little bit about the area? What's uh, this part of Florida like? What's the standing sea market like in this part of Florida? Yeah, so this is um, Longboat Key, and you know, right now we're sitting, you know, probably 200 yards um, off the Gulf of Mexico, and we're also backing up to the intercoastal. You know, in Florida, we're we're a really special market, uh, especially uh, for standing seam and for aluminum roof systems. We're, we're right now currently in an exposure D uh, wind zone here. So, you know, you've got different exposures of wind and then you've got also different wind categories the further south that you go that really drive the engineering behind all these projects to have to withstand, you know, really on the engineering side, double um, what they would think a wind burst could actually uh, come to. So uh, there's a lot of engineering that goes into the staining seam systems here. Uh, there's really a lot of engineering behind all the systems, but staining seam wise, this is a really good market. Um, Obviously, you want to try to go with a concealed fastener system every chance you get to when you're on salt water. You want to stick with aluminum, uh, stainless steel fasteners and clips, rivets, all of the parts and pieces that go into that. And, you know, you avoid corrosion, you avoid early failure on a roof system by being able to conceal all those, all the fasteners and all the clips when you do that. So that and just the uplift pressures you got a standing seam, this is a, a wonderful place to be able to, to use that product. Yeah, for sure. And this project is a great example of that. So let's head around in the front and take a look and you can tell me a little bit about this project specifically. Alright. This project brought to us by a local roofer, um, Avery Roofing. It actually has six radiuses within um, the curve of the roof. Uh, panels are uh, approximately 76 feet long around the roofs. Obviously you can see the design of the building, uh, very unique. There wasn't a lot of people that were interested in getting into the job, so it's one that we wanted to take. So tell me about what panel profile you're using, what uh, substrate. So this is an inch and a half mechanical. Um, it's run on a new tech roll former coil from, from Sheffield Metals, obviously, and, and it's 032 aluminum. Uh, Regal White, which is a Kynar paint finish on it. Why is aluminum really important in this area? So obviously uh, aluminum here, um, you get a coastal paint warranty uh, that comes along with, uh, with an aluminum system that is a concealed fastener system and it being is obviously backing up to brackish water and within a frisbee toss of um, full salt water with breaking surf, it's, it's very important. So now we know what's on the system, but why? You know, why standing seam on this system here? So with the, with the arch on the roof and it having six radiuses within it, uh, you really can't do this with an exposed fastener system. Uh, you have to be able to use something um, with a standing rib on it uh, to be able to put the pressure on it and make it actually be able to make its way around this radius. So um, standing seam is an absolute must when you do this. You kind of are left with one of three options. You can either go with a one inch uh, mechanical, an inch and a half mechanical, or a two inch mechanical. Um, the one inch uh, really felt a little small for this project. Uh, with the, the fascia being you know about 14 inches tall on this, uh, I wanted a little bit more height and the two inch felt a little bit too industrial for what they were trying to go with. So uh, they landed on an inch and a half mechanical and uh, we were able to provide that for this project. Awesome. And your new tech SSQ is just off camera here. Why does portable on-site roll forming make sense for this project? So this project and a lot of projects like it, portable roll forming um, is a perfect solution for this and that, you know, we didn't have a, we didn't have a panel list for this job. When you look at this, you know, there, there's only 
one spot that, that's a crest of this roof and you have to be able to keep water flowing in the right direction. So to be able to come over here with the coil on the machine, uh, wait until the customer was able to generate a panel list for us on site. Uh, we can make changes as we, as we need to. If we need to add an inch, if the building's out of square, uh, we make the changes as we need to. Um, also, you know, you have the ability to dial a machine in and out um, to add a little bit of uh, material to either leg of, of the roll former uh, simply by moving the guides. Just a lot of flexibility in what you do having the portable roll former. Um, it, it really makes a difference for a job like this and, and um, tight situations or, you know, there's, there's probably a million things I could list, but um, for this situation, you know, portable roll forming was, was a perfect solution. What about the curvature of the roof? You know, how do you get that curve in there and what is that process like? So um, obviously we use a um, also a portable uh, radius machine and um, you're basically pushing pressure into the male and the female rib of the panel. Um, you have to support um, the sides of the of the legs and then apply the pressure on the top of the and, and the bottom of the legs and, and you know just depending on the amount of pressure you put in you know you can you can use a guide that'll help push the panel to its radius and um, it's not rocket science, you know, it's, it's geometry, but uh, it can be tough at times, but you just have to take your time, uh, move very slow with the panels, and uh, this job being aluminum, you know, makes it a little easier. There's more malleability uh, in the aluminum than, than what we'd have if it was a steel panel. In this unique project, are there any special installation details that you uh, had to come across here? Um, yeah, so some of the details, um, a lot of times if you see uh, radius roof you see a gable trim where about every 10 inches they they make a vertical cut up the gable trims they and they overlap and fold and fold and fold that ends up kinking across the top it's it's just not as pleasant um, we really like to to take the time coming up and and we make a two-piece gable trim and we hand cut all the templates um, to match the radius of the roof and then um, using a set of hand rollers, we you know we make the kickouts and the hems. Uh, we Pittsburgh seam the the top, and we join those two pieces together. And, and that way, when it finishes out, you get full 10, le 10 foot lengths of trim um, that are handmade to this exact radius, and everything fits on you know very smooth um, when it goes. The other side of things, which is, is nice with this this new tech roll former, is you know we're going to take uh, one of the panels and and flip it upside down when we get done. We're basically going to run a coil upside down through this roll former. Um, rather than making a Z flashing, we'll, we'll be able to use the leg of the roll of the, the panel um, as the Z flashing. It'll be a perfect radius that matches the roof uh, without having to hand make that trim in our shop. So it's a time saver and, um, and it'll end up being a really clean finish. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, these guys are going to start putting panels back on the roof. So let's go inside and you can tell me a little bit more. So here we are on the inside of the house and we can see the roof deck here. What kind of unique challenges did this project present? So I would say the uniqueness of this one obviously is the barrel, you know, that it holds and it, you know, it's got, as we said uh, before, six different radiuses. Um, those ranging from uh, 212 foot radius to an eight foot radius, you know, so some of these, um, you know, make a complete circle out of a, a 16 foot panel and other ones uh, 424 feet, you know, yeah. to make a complete circle. So. Uh, mathematically, um, being able to know exactly when uh, the points intersect and the radius has changed on this thing, it was um, a little bit of a challenge just to lay that out properly and um, be able to know when to change pressures on our machine. Uh, I would say besides that, just getting the trims to fall out uh, appropriately. Uh, the dimensions on the blueprint are kind of an as-built and uh, there's a one inch layer of plywood on this thing so you know you raise up that radius by an inch and it changes the dimensions yep. um, completely and then we're in a shop uh, 200 miles away from here building trim, you know, okay. so you yeah, can't yeah. just um, run up the road and, and take one more measurement, you know, so making sure we get it right, uh, definitely a little bit challenging. Yeah, for sure. And when it comes to standing seam, being able to have the flexibility to even complete a project like this is a big deal. I mean, could you even do this build with another type of roof system or, you know, how difficult would that be? You know, it would have had to been a uh, mechanical seam, uh, would have had to been standing seam. The only other option you'd have is going with a shorter or a higher rib. The two inch rib might have even been a little bit too stout to be able to bend around this radius in some places. And you know, there's no way you're going to put an exposed fastener on this roof. Uh, you might have been able to run a corrugated sideways or something, you know, in a, like a wall panel, but that's not really the look they were trying to achieve with yeah. this building. Um, and then the fact that we used aluminum, the only other product that, you know, probably malleable enough to make it around this, this barrel would have been a zinc or copper um, and those were um, you know double and triple the price of being able to get yourself into um, a really good sound uh, roof system here. 
Right, and, and you know, Sheffield Metals loves being part of awesome projects like this, and thank you very much for being on the channel and taking the time to talk to us a little bit today. Subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel, comment below if you have any questions. Anything else, check us out at Sheffield Metals Online. We'll catch you next time.